week I went to visit Shadi, whose family owns a piece of land in the Magroer Valley. This is between Pejala and Batir. And Shadi lives on the family land and started farming there only two years ago. He renovated the terraces, he covered them with compost, and he started farming, although he has no access to a natural water source, and he is not allowed to dig a well, because his land is designated as Area C, which means that it is under full Israeli military control. The area of the Magroer Valley is currently under threat of being taken over by Israeli settlers who are establishing new outposts on several locations in the area. Much of the Magroer Valley is actually added to UNESCO's list of world heritage and it is part of the inscription of Batir and the cultural landscape of southern Jerusalem. The official name is Palestine, land of olives and vines. This happened in 2014. I visited Shadi because he used to sell his produce in Singer Cafe and over the summer we had a break and then I heard that much of his summer crops were actually burned by the early hot summer that started early in June. So I recorded our conversation as I was there trying to have a better idea of the challenges that he is facing there and especially this hot summer. And it is nice, you can hear the sounds of the valley as we are walking around and visiting the farm. And I think you can best catch that with all the sounds if you wear earphones, if you have any. After our visit to the farm, we walked back up the hill and my friend Dee, who was with me and forgot to bring her water bottle and didn't say anything. She was nearly dehydrating. So as we were going up, we decided to stop at a restaurant called Jala Jungle. And there we climbed on the roof to see what was happening down at the peace and solidarity tents. This tent was set up by the Kesia family, who is from Bejala, who are protesting against attempts by settlers to take over their land. They had one month to prove that they had ownership of the land, which they can because they have an ownership document. The settlers also had one month to prove ownership, which they couldn't. So the family, after one month of not being allowed on their own land, they organized a peace march with solidarity visitors and also representatives of different Christian denominations. And they wanted to return to their land. We saw a lot of military and police and also some settler cars and we saw a group of about a hundred Palestinians and Israeli peace activists and some foreigners and a lot of press who came to support or report on this peace march. Here is an audio account of our visit to the Magroer Valley. The name Magroer, by the way, comes from the roaring sound that water makes when it travels down the rocks of the hills into the valley during the winter months. The valley has a lot of agricultural terraces. The land is traditionally owned by Palestinians from Beit Jala, which is on the northwest of Bethlehem, and Batir, which is more to the west. And I recorded two episodes on Batir in March 2021. If you're interested, you can also look those up. Hello! Hi! I'm good. Getting back used to the hot weather here. <laughs> yeah, thanks. It's like I came back and Tariq told me, no, it's not hot now, Crystal. It was much more hot in the yes, July, yes. beginning of August. Yes, it was. But because uh, Holland was cool... Yeah. Now it's changing, yeah. But did you have any summer crops at all, or how, what happened? Uh, just under the uh, upstairs there. Yeah. Downstairs, nothing worked out. Oh. The, the heat came at a uh, very early stage when the plants were like small, then it was 40 degree and, and they just died. They just died. Oh. It 
supposed to come in August, but it came three months earlier. So. What? But what did you have planted down there? Uh, a lot of zucchini, zucchini and uh, fakus, khiar, uh, uh, melons, watermelon, honey melon, uh, pumpkins, uh, corn, uh, bagdunis. So they never even had the chance to grow up, and it was gone. <laughs> I had about zucchini. I had about 800 plants, <laughs> and I picked, uh, I think, two. No. Yes. Yeah. From 800 a, plants. Not even enough to make mehdi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's bad. And what uh, did you have up? Uh, tomatoes. I have the cherry tomatoes. The big ones I had down. Also died. Also died. Mm. The cherry tomato I have, I have up, they're good, not not perfect, but good. And uh, yeah, some tomatillos. Are uh, you selling uh, anything or just eating it with the family? Yeah, just with the family and also the grapes. I picked them about four or five days ago. They were like this, they're supposed to oh, be big. Oh. Yeah. Well, that is a financial loss also for you. Yes. Yeah, because you invested in the seeds, in the workers, in the water, and now you have no income. Yeah, I'm, I'm making, uh, what do you call dibis from the small wine and from the grapes and... Yeah. Okay, and are you putting a lot of sugar in your dibis? No. Okay. None. None. Great, then I'll buy. Without sugar, <laughs> Without sugar, Without I, will, sugar I, will. I will take it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some peppers. Oh, yeah, here there are peppers, yeah. yeah. Red peppers. Not as I expected, or not as last year. Last year they were like crazy. What so. happened to the berries? Also they, the same story? No, no, the... Uh, I finished picking the blackberries, the raspberries, yeah, the same story, but the blackberry I finished. Okay. When when the heat came, yeah, everything was uh, ripe, and then I picked it. But do you is this, it. is this a problem all over the over Palestine? Yeah. So this all year. farmers are suffering from this. This year, yeah, and and here we I don't have enough water. I have to buy. And it's a lot. It's about 2,000 shekels every month, just water and, yeah. Wow. It's a lot of money. Just yeah. to, to let them survive. Not, yeah. yeah, not even yeah. to grow up. Not even to grow up, so, yeah. So does that mean that right now the, the vegetables and fruits in the market are mainly not Palestinian local? No, 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 no. In, in Jenin, they, they have water all the time. But now with the situation in Jenin, are they able to export from there to the south of the West Bank? They yeah, can? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you still, if you go now to the vegetable market and you ask something Beladi, you will yeah. be able to get. Either from Jordan or from Jenin, Jericho. Yeah. Yeah. Because if they, if you have a, a water source, it's easier. So Yes, sure. Yeah. And there's no springs here that you could tap into? It's not allowed, first of all. It's not allowed to look for. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm sure there is. Up there, they are. Yeah. And, yeah. And down for sure. Mm. If you go down maybe six, seven meters, you will find water. But you can't dig a well. They no. won't let you? No. You can dig a well, but not uh, take the groundwater. Yeah. Are you allowed to collect rainwater? I'm collecting. Nobody... They didn't say anything. They didn't say anything. No. I got electricity. Oh, yeah. oh! Uh, solar cells here. You have solar panels? Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's good because sun, there's always sun. Yes. So, yeah, at least. Okay, great. Yeah. And what, and uh, uh, now when, with the new plans, with the new settlement, 
Yeah. Did you see more uh, action? Are they sure. passing by more? Every day, every day they're passing by. And what are they doing? Are they building? Are they? Uh... They have uh, the containers that are ready houses. Yeah, every few weeks they got one, two in. Maybe ten days ago, they got two brand new. <laughs> So they pass by up here with yes. a huge truck, yes. and you see the container passing by. Yes. Wow. And we're not allowed to do that. No. For sure. <laughs> you can't build anything new. No, no. And can't bring anything like they are doing. No. Yeah. Do they approach you? They never talk to you. No. They don't come on the land, nothing. And you sleep here still? Yes. With the dogs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. Is yeah. The black one, is she old or? I see no, she's she, limping. She's, uh, she fell down a few years ago. Yeah. Mm. And she's she's very friendly. She yes, is, she's, yeah. The other one was jealous that I was petting her. <laughs> <laughs> and she wanted to be pet. Ah. Very friendly. Oh, that's cute. I'm yeah. sorry, Shadi, that it went like this this year. Yeah. Yeah. So now you get ready for the winter crops and what will you plant in the beginning what is the first thing to uh, do spring onions uh, lettuce uh, broccoli kohlrabi do you do beetroot can you do beetroot yes i never did it or last year i did some but yeah i need to look for seeds yeah beetroot carrots seeds, carrots potatoes potatoes yeah, cabbage, all of these uh, winter crops. winter stuff. Yeah. And did you have leek. to leek? Oh, leeks, nice. Yeah. I like leeks. Yeah. yeah. But and did they, they sell? They they don't have a lot here. Yeah. No. True. Celery. Yeah. Now these also. are things that I got. Yes. I'm used from Holland, but here I didn't yeah, find a I'm, lot. Yeah, I'm trying to do things. Yeah, that yeah. are not everywhere. Yeah. So to get some. To be specialist. Yeah. Hey, and do you need to do to do something new with the soil? No. Just like that. You don't have to work it or Nothing. add something. Nothing. No. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna have to hire uh, workers again. I have one. Oh, he's busy busy now already yeah. to prepare. Mm. Yeah, he's uh, yeah. taking the old uh, spinny yeah. plants out. It's so sad to see that, to see that it's, uh, it never became more than just roots and, uh, and yeah. some leaves. Ya yeah, haram. Well, it's all limestone. Yeah. Neither one in the past. Oh, yeah. There are some raspberries. Are you still watering them? Yes. Yeah. But they're, they used to be like this, big ones. You can put it on your fingers. Like, oh. But now they're... I, I brought three uh, raspberry... Um, what do you call it when it's a shoot, oh, shoot of? Yeah, from my friend. And I put them now in a pot. Watering them? This will not work. No? no? No, I tried it. Oh. Three times. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So how did you manage to get these raspberries growing? From Israel. Ah, because they are sort of locally locally trained. Yes. <laughs> oh wow. It's cool in here. Oh. Yeah. Air <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, caves are natural air conditioning yes. for sure. Yeah. That's the settlement yeah. right over there. And you can see the wall. Oh, that's. Yeah, that's Hargilo. Oh. That's actually. But I thought there was a small one starting on this yeah, side. Yeah, that's new. Yeah. Up here. Up. Okay, That's okay. new. This is the settlement where they brought a lot of the settlers that were removed from the Gaza Strip in 2005. Some of them, most of them resettled near the Gaza Strip, but some of them settled here in Hargilo. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I just didn't even, okay, I didn't even realize. I don't think it's really possible. Oh, 
The next turn is Jala Jungle. Do you want more water? Well, have, have a sip, please. Yeah, we don't need to passing out, right? No. Thanks. Take it easy. We don't need to uh, get ourselves into trouble now, so. No, D, I'm not going by myself. There is police and uh, army. <laughs> Up there. But actually, that's why I didn't want to come down because I was afraid this is going to... Because now they set up like a, <coughs> a checkpoint and they'll ask everyone. <coughs> See if there's somebody... Open, seems open. Maybe we can have a nice view from the roof on what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> wow, we, we used to pick uh, zaytun and this. Yes, and uh, now I'm Safafia. Shukran. I I married from Beit Safafa, so I'm now <laughs> I'm not Safafia. I know. Oh, so I didn't come here since maybe ten years. I didn't come here. I was busy with the kids, but now they are here. Talita, ten and eight. Hadi and Louisa, they are both. Yeah. Oh, she's very thirsty. She went out without water, so she needs money. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there? Can we see from the roof what's going on with the tent down? There's a lot of change. The lady, they take him out. Ah, can, but can I go up to see what's yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah. From where? Yeah, yeah. So I'm now up on the roof of the restaurant. And I can see a tent with the family and a couple of people singing and carrying crosses. The soldiers are stopping the family from walking. And um, there are... Yeah, I can see. Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell... Yeah, from this ladder. So it's not easy. Yeah. And yeah, there are also some Israeli... Um, activist it seems and um, the, I have three soldiers down from me looking around and blocking the road so I'm happy I did my car up on the road so uh, later on I'm able to move if they keep blocking the road here but um, they have uh, or are giving a um, press conference at the moment talking about the situation of their land and uh, they claim to have property rights to the land and settlers uh, were given uh, time to prove that they have property rights but uh, so far as I understand they couldn't prove it so they claim, the family claims that the one month military closed zone that was put on their land should be uh, lifted and that they should be able to go back and they want to march now like a peace march from this tent uh, down the valley and then up to the land that they uh, say they have ownership of <laughs> <laughs> Where is the land that they're talking about? It's, uh, it's uh, when you follow the road down where we just, the junction that you see over there, yeah. when you start going up, it's somewhere there on the right. Or is it all the way up? The, their land, is it all the way up where you see the construction? It's deep up, yeah. Iowa, okay. So it's more Iowa. to the down, more to the right, yeah. yeah. There used to be a restaurant. They used to have a, a restaurant Over there. there. Yeah. yeah, and they they demolished it, and then they rebuilt something that was more like a tent restaurant. And also they came and they demolished it. 
So they've been here for a few years. Yeah, at least uh, th since I come to Palestine 15 years, I know about the, uh, this place. But you see, the army has just left and the police, but they probably went down and then further up, maybe waiting for them if they are doing the, the oh, peace march. Because there's still the white down there. Yeah. And also, if if they go to the land, I don't know if the settlers are there, but if the settlers are there, then they will... It could be a problem. Yeah, they will have to stand between the settlers and these protesters. You have a car? I have a car, yeah. But this yeah. is beautiful here. I mean, I've come here already twice yeah. this year. But is it is it open or are you now working and it's closed? Yeah, no, no. Open in the afternoon and in yeah. the evening. Mm -hmm. Are you the one who is posting on Facebook? Uh, Isa? Yeah. Isa. Yeah. No, 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 it's not you. It's a brother. It's a brother. Yeah, big the big brother. Because yeah. I see these posts. Yeah. Jala Jungle by Isa. Jala Jungle. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's your brother. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's done a nice job. Yeah. Makes me want to come. Is there somebody here uh, over in the night also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to we are, to we stay here. here. We are here all time. Yeah. Well, you can even camp here, right? Isn't there one place to sleep or you have two? There's one. One. Yeah, okay, so it's better to go now. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's going to be yeah. a problem? Go down, go no, we're not going down, we're going up. Going up. Go slowly, the street is not La, We're not going down, we're going up. Up where? To my car. We were already. Oh, okay. You have to go, go now. Okay, good. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Shukran. So we see you next time. We come for a beer. You have beer? What? You sell beer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, really, their food is delicious. I've been here many times. Shukran. Since Dee and I had to leave early from the Magruur because Dee was almost dehydrated, we don't know what happened after the press conference. I'm sitting here with Amira, who is going to tell us about the press conference, what happened afterwards, and what is the update of today for the situation of the land of your... F it's your family-in-law, right? My, yes, yeah, my ex-family-in-law. <laughs> 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 yes. So, good morning. My name is Amira. Um, Alice Kisia, who you saw on social media, is my sister-in-law. 
That's how I'm related. Um, I have a son whose name is Ramzi, Ramzi Kisiya Jr. So the, the grandfather is Ramzi Kisiya <laughs> Senior. Senior, yes. Yeah. So um, let's say about the day of the conference, we had the, a press conference. Many people came from all religions, from all faiths. Even a member of Knesset uh, from Israel, Ofer Kassif, came and he gave also a word there. He's been very um, supportive to us. He was coming almost every week or two weeks and uh, going with us to the land, inside the land also, to show support. And he used to talk uh, with the army and tell them that what they are doing is wrong and illegal because those settlers don't have any paper, any piece of paper. We have papers from the Israeli court, from the civil administration. They don't have. Anyway, after the press conference, they all went. The priests, the rabbis, the sheikh, uh, uh, Ofer Kassif, and others uh, like uh, from different organizations, local and international, like uh, Sabil. They had a delegation from the states, politicians, uh, and uh, also religious people. They walked all the way up to the land. And on the way, the army was waiting for them. They did a small protest. They sang, they prayed in front of the army because they couldn't go further to the land. They stopped them. And if they tried to go further or, you know, they uh, uh, a little bit pushed around, they would have uh, you know, uh, got beaten like what happened uh, with us uh, previously. So uh, they just stayed there. Uh, they protested. They said the words, they prayed together in different languages, they sang uh, different songs also, and then they came back. And like this, the press, co press conference ended. After two days, we were surprised by uh, 60 soldiers coming from up of the hill, from, from uh, like uh, on the entrance of Al-Makhrur, where Ricardo is, and they entered walking 60 soldiers. We counted them. <laughs> and they uh, demolished our uh, solidarity tent. They took it away. They even uh, released our dogs who were there attached to chains. They released them in the, you know, in the in Al Makhrur. Until now, we can't find them. You know, they got lost. They took everything, our um, fridge, uh, the mattresses, like everything that we had. And they gave the family only, like for Alice and her mom, dad and brother, another military order, which is only for them that it doesn't allow them to enter al makhrur all al makhrur now, like from Ricardo all the way to their land. They are prohibited to enter the al makhrur as a total, and they took the solidarity camp, and now they cannot access there. But we will not stop. We promised them, and we promised everyone who was with us or against us that we will not stop. Nothing will stop us. Even a closed military area order will not stop us. What we did, we went virtually now. We created a group, a global group, from all around the world, from all the countries of the world. Like we have, like literally, all the countries of the world, people gathering together. And on the 29th of September this month, we will be holding around the world a global prayer time in solidarity with al Makhrur. And also in solidarity with the Christians of Palestine, because people around the world don't know anything about us. They don't know even we exist. And they also think that this war and this occupation and this struggle and this conflict, call it whatever you want, is against Muslims or between Muslims and Jews. And this is not true, absolutely not true. We are Christian Palestinians. I was born in Bethlehem where Jesus was born. I'm a Christian from a Christian family. My father is a historian who was able to go back to my family history to like um, 1,600 something. And we were there. And even if we were able to go back before, we know that we are there and we were never converted to Christianism. We are Christians of this land. Maybe we are related to Jesus somehow. <laughs> <laughs> great, 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 great granddaughter. <laughs> no, Jesus didn't have children. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe relative. Relative, yeah. <laughs> so, yes. So, so, you know, people don't know that that this conflict is, is not against religion, is for taking more land. It's about colonialism. It's about apartheid. 
And that's what uh, the occupation is doing. It's just taking more land and more land. Even if you come to Bethlehem and you see the apartheid wall and how it's, it's formed, it's not like a, you know, a rectangular going around the city and, you know, putting us in the middle. No, it's like a zigzag, you know, going around and just to take more land, to take more land. And, uh, and Al Makhrur. This is part of the bigger map of uh, the Great Jerusalem. That's why they wanted to connect the settlements uh, in the south, like Gush Atzion, Bitar Elit, and all of these uh, settlements, and Afrat, and Toko, and all of these settlements in the south, all the way with Jerusalem to, to create the Great Jerusalem. This is a plan that was started really long ago. And if they take the Al Makhrur, that's what they will do. They will connect everything together, and we would be literally in an open-air prison as uh, Bethlehemites, people who live in Bethlehem. We will not have any access, any, any, any place to breathe. You know, Al Makhrur, you know it, Chris. Mm-hmm. It's uh, the, our only uh, getaway. Yeah. You know, it's our only green area that we can do hiking, we can walk, we can do picnic. Sometimes I used to take my son for barbecue there just to enjoy the sunset. And now, it will be all gone. It's, so it's not really about Kisiya family and uh, their, their land. It's really about the whole mountain. If the Kisiya family loses their land for those settlers, mm. the mountain will, will go away. Did these settlers manage to prove that they have any kind of ownership? Because I remember you told me before that they had a month to go and, and prove that. What happened? So because they couldn't prove ownership, they couldn't bring any piece of paper, That's why the military renew the military order. So the military order in the closed area military order, it's issued only to give time for two parties to prove ownership. But as Kisiya family proved their ownership anyway, and since last year in the Israeli courts and in the Israeli civil administration, now it's time for the settlers to prove. But since the 31st of July, since they entered the first day and kicked us out, until now, they couldn't prove. That's why they keep on renewing the military order, though it's illegal to renew it. And one important information that everybody has to know, the military order that they issued last time and this time after the 2nd of September is wrong because it has two pages. The first page, it's like the written uh, order, okay? The second page is the map. The map is correct, which is our land, uh, showing the area which is closed military area. But the first page, it doesn't say Wad al Makhrur, and our area is Wad al Makhrur, our mountain. Our even we proved that in maps s- since 1944, we brought maps to prove that this area is called Wadi al Makhrur or Al Qasir. The military order because. They cannot order it there because there is nothing wrong there. So what they do, the first page, it says 31st of July until the 2nd of uh, September. It was for Wadi Halets, which is another area nearby in Al-Batir land, which is where they will build the settlement, the new settlement in Wadi Halets. Okay, Nahal Halets, that's how they call it on the paper. It's not Wadi Al-Makhrur or Nahal Al-Makhrur, you know? So, and and Ofer Kasif, when he came, the member of Knesset, he was telling them, like, this is wrong, give us a new order, and we promise you, we will not arrive here, we will not come to the land. But as long as this is wrong, we will keep on coming. So, on the 2nd of September, what they did, They ordered a new military order with a new area, not Wadi Al Makhrur, not uh, Al Qasir, another area nearby from also from Batir land. So they are using wrong military orders, correct map, but wrong written and signed paper. So the map, I can bring it now, you know, I, and I can put it uh, together with the order. You know, I, I can bring uh, your house and put it with the order. It's not a, very, a smart thing to do. It, the more important is the signed paper, the first paper. So if the first paper is wrong, like, how come you are doing this? So this is illegal. They can do it because they are occupation. They are illegal anyway. They are in the military. They are complicit and the police with those settlers. Actually, they let them work there. They allow them with the new governments of Ben Gvir and Smotherich. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if people worldwide are hearing this and they want to 
join on this 29th of September, what can they do and where can they find more information or where can they tell you that they are doing something like a vigil? Yes. Uh, so we have an Instagram page that we opened, uh, Save Al Makhroor. I can give you, maybe you can share it on your, uh, yeah, on your platform. And also there is a WhatsApp group. So in th this WhatsApp group, there are like groups different groups, it's a community. So when you enter to the main chat, the global chat, and then you choose your country, and then you enter to your, your country, and then you see when it's happening, at what time, if they need help, what help they, do they need, if you want to help, if not, you know, so I can give you the link and you can share it with your audience, sure. Okay, great. I will add that to the show notes. Thank you very much, Amira. <laughs> Thank you and have a lovely day. <laughs> Please don't forget to support the podcast on Kofi and follow me on social media. All links are in the show notes.